Hello everyone and welcome back to one of the greatest tournaments ever played. Of course I'm talking about the 1959 Candidates Tournament uh, that featured 8 players and uh, half of those players were uh, either former or future world champions. Uh, Smyslov being the former world champion and Petrosian Tal and Fischer uh, being the future world champions. So quite a strong tournament and the other 4 of course were Paul Keres, Svetozar Gligoric, uh, Friedrich Olafsson and uh, Paul Benko. So definitely, definitely a strong tournament and a very exciting one. Every player played four games uh, against every other player. Uh, so whoever emerges victorious is definitely the strongest. Uh, now, I've already shown you one game uh, between Fischer and Tal from this tournament. It's uh, in one of my older videos, but I will put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. It's also a very interesting game. Uh, this is uh, another game from this tournament I decided to show and uh, many of you know this, many of you don't. Before this tournament Fischer actually faced Tal two times and both of the games were drawn. But in this tournament uh, it's a different story. Uh, but uh, I'll get back to that after I show you this game. So Fischer has the white pieces and he opens with e4, that's of course to be expected. Uh, c5 by Tal. And uh, I said that, uh, Fischer said that Soviets were afraid to face Fischer with the Sicilian in my previous video. Uh, but as you can see, Tal really doesn't mind playing c5 against Fischer. Uh, knight to f3, d6 and d4. So c captures, knight captures, knight to f6, knight to c3 and a6. Tal goes for the Nidorf variation. Uh, Fischer goes for bishop to c4, his standard move, e6 and bishop to b3. Uh, bishop to e7, we have f4. Tal castles and uh, queen to f3 now. Queen to c7, Fischer castles and b5 now. And here it's a very delicate, delicate position. Here a move like a3 would definitely favor white as it stops this nasty b4 move getting rid of the knight on c3. Uh, but Fischer goes for the early f5. Uh, interestingly, e5 is not, is not recommended here. Uh, as even if uh, even if uh, you play something like bishop to b7 going after the queen and you do decide to sacrifice the queen with e captures on f6 uh, after bishop captures pawn captures queen captures and rook captures uh, it's still a better position for black after b4 black will displace this knight and uh, white won't really have enough compensation uh, it's a different story in similar positions when the bishop is on instead of b3 on e2 uh, then when you sacrifice the queen you can capture with the bishop and then the bishop automatically attacks attacks the rook on a8. So yeah, just wanted to, you know, put that out there. Uh, but in the game Fischer played f5 and this was a bit too early. Tal played b4 and now Fischer played knight to a4. And if he decided to go for f5 immediately when Tal played b4 he should have gone for e captures, uh, f captures on e6. Uh, with the idea that after b captures, now he has e captures on f7 with check, king to h8, and now queen captures on c3. Uh, now, if you decide to capture the queen with black, this doesn't really favor black. After queen captures, pawn captures, uh, you can't grab material, because if knight captures, bishop to d uh, d5 attacks the knight and the rook. Uh, so, after this queen captures on c3, black would play queen to b7, uh, and now white can continue with bishop to d5, attacking the queen. Knight captures, pawn captures, and uh, now if you, now it's a playable position. If you play queen captures, now you get bishop to h6, and uh, now uh, it's extremely dangerous, and black has to be very careful what he does. Of course, you can't capture because you get knight to c6 with check. Uh, king has nowhere to go. The pawn is guarding g8, so you have to block this, and there is nothing for you to block this with. You would have to block with the queen and then simply knight captures and white wins the game. So after b4, uh, this might seem reasonable since Fischer already played f5, but he decides to play knight to a4 and now Tal simply pushes e5. He displaces this, the knight from d4 as well. So knight to e2 and now if you look at that position, the position with this knight on a4 and this knight on e2 isn't that great for white. Uh, bishop to b7, now Tal will focus all of his pieces to go for the e4 pawn. Uh, knight to g3 uh, and knight b to d7. We have bishop to e3, bishop to c6 and now bishop to f2. Uh, queen to b7 now attacking d4 pawn sorry three times and uh, as bishop moved his uh, dark square bishop to f2 now he makes room for the rook to guard the e4 pawn from the e-file. Uh, and now Tal plays uh, d5 
And this is one of those moments in the life of a Sicilian player when you're able to push d5 without actually ruining your position. Uh, you feel great as, you know, if you push d5 and you're playing the Sicilian, you're doing something great. Uh, e captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and knight to e4 now. And here top plays knight to f4. And now this knight is a monster here. Uh, Fisher's knight on e4 is pinned. It's uh, not going to be easy to get rid of this pin, and you can't get rid of the knight on g4 uh, on f4. If you play g3, you lose the game immediately due to knight to h3 check. King moves, and now knight to g5, uh, attacking the queen, and now having a triple attack on the knight on e4. Uh, you're, you're simply losing the piece and the game. Queen moves, knight captures, it's all over. Uh, so after this knight to f4 move, Fisher tried c4, but now comes an even uh, an even <laughs> greater idea. Uh, here Tal plays g6. Uh, with the idea of playing g captures on f5, attacking the pink piece and winning the game. Uh, Fisher captures, f captures on g6, and now comes the immediate f5. So no, <laughs> Tal doesn't waste time. Uh, here Fisher pushes g7. Uh, attacking Tal's rook, uh, we have king captures and now queen to g1, uh, queen to g3 check. Fisher manages to unpin the queen with check, king to h8 and now knight to c5, attacking Tal's queen on b7. Uh, we have knight captures, uh, bishop captures, bishop captures, knight captures attacking the queen and now queen to c7 and uh, this is now too much, there are simply too many threats. Uh, Tal is threatening rook to g8, attacking the queen, when the queen moves uh, rook captures uh, on g2 is coming. Uh, also, the g2 pawn is already attacked twice by the knight and by the bishop. Uh, if that this bishop ever moves, there will be an open attack from the queen to the knight on, c, on c5. So there are simply too many threats for here to, uh, for white to handle. Uh, Fisher plays queen to e3, and now comes rook a to e8, defending the d5 pawn. As d5 pawn, as is, if Tal captured, then Fisher could capture the e5 pawn with the check. So first Tal protects it, and now there is no way uh, for Fisher to actually protect the g2 pawn. Uh, if you try something like g3, you lose on the spot due to knight to h3 check, king moves, and now comes f4, uh, busting open the position. This rook is coming into play, it's, it's all over. Uh, so after rook a to e8, uh, Fisher tried rook to e2. Uh, he decided he has to give up some material in order to survive. Uh, Tal played, of course, knight captures, he doesn't mind, queen captures, and now bishop captures on g2, completely shattering Fisher's defenses. And, of course, we said that if, bishop, if the bishop ever moves, uh, there will be uh, an attack open from the queen to the knight. So first, uh, Fisher grabs some material, knight captures on a6, attacking Tal's queen, uh, queen to a7 check, and now Fisher plays king captures on g2. And now comes the idea, rook to g8 check. And now Fisher definitely has some problems. Uh, if he tries something like king to f3, then after e4, uh, it's all over. King has to come to f4, and now comes queen to b6, and uh, uh, there is no defense against queen to h6 checkmate. Uh, if Fisher would try to prevent this by playing something like queen to h5, uh, then comes queen to f2, and it's again checkmate. You only have one move to block it, and then queen captures on f3. Uh, a very nice checkmate. So, after this rook to g8 check, uh, Fisher played king to h3, but now, as you can see, this rook is completely cutting the king off. The king is only uh, allowed to, to walk uh, along the h file, and here is a, it's actually a forced checkmate in five moves. Uh, so, it's a pretty nice position for you to pause the video and try to find it. It's a pretty common theme, uh, so, you know, you'll probably be able to use it in your own games. Uh, so, I will give it a couple of seconds if you want to solve it. Uh, there are actually more, more, there's more than one move that actually solves the position in five moves, so whichever you find, uh, it's perfectly fine. So for those of you who were able to solve it, congratulations, you're a great player. Uh, in the game, Tal played uh, queen to g7, uh, with the idea of queen to h6 checkmate, uh, but also if you found something like rook to e6, uh, with the idea of rook to h6, that also works. Uh, so Tal played queen to g7, here bishop to d1 was played to meet queen to h6 with queen to h5, as the bishop is now protecting the queen, uh, but here Tal simply played rook to e6, and in this position uh, Bobby Fischer resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, there is no defense against rook to h6, the king is stuck on the h-file, you can block it, but that's like, me, you know, there, there's really no point to this. So yeah, after rook to e6, Tal resigned the game, and uh, I did 
I did uh, say that uh, I will tell you something more about the results. Uh, f like I said, before this tournament, Fisher and Tal played two games, both, both of them were drawn. Uh, but in this tournament, in the 1959 candidates, uh, Tal's score against Fisher is 4-0. to zero. So that's that's very uncomfortable for Bobby, but uh, okay, <clears throat> later on uh, Bobby will settle the score. Uh, and uh, I don't know, the, the information is uh, slightly different depending on where you look for them, uh, but on the official chessgames.com uh, database, uh, Tal's score against Fisher throughout their entire life is uh, four wins to Tal, uh, two wins for Fisher, and uh, I believe five draws. Uh, but that's including only classical games. If you include uh, rapid and exhibition games, then, the, then their score is uh, four wins Tal, four wins Fisher, and five draws. So. Uh, we, we can say that after Fisher lost these four games that he evened out the score with Tal. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I will put a link uh, in the description to the video I made, like, uh, I think it was like five months ago. Also, a game between Tal and Fisher from this tournament. It's also very enjoyable if you want to check it out. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.